hello boys <coughs> good evening to all of you this video is uh, meant for your upsc nda preparation and this is uh, useful for both class 11th as well as 12th biology as well as computer boys so in this session i am going to talk about pathogens what are pathogens disease causing organisms so pathogens are organisms that can cause disease and we are going to discuss about various types of pathogens what are the diseases that they cause how to prevent it and also we will be taking some examples in this so pathogens are organisms that can cause disease different types of pathogens and severity of the diseases that they cause are very diverse so we are going to look at different types of path pathogens normally we do we do the tissue culture and identify the pathogens through various uh, lab tests so a pathogen brings disease to the host host is one who keeps the pathogen inside and allows the pathogen to consume food like a human being allows pathogens inside inside the small intestine stomach all this it starts eating our own tissues our own glucose and grow in numbers so it has got a double benefit it gets free of uh, free food it gets accommodation and it causes danger to us so another uh, name we can give for pathogen is it's a infectious agent it causes infections and whenever infection spreads immediately our body will show symptoms like if there is any pathogen inside like symptoms like you get stomach ache fever chills body ache muscle cramps or sweating so our body will react and show the presence of the pathogens inside as with any organism pathogens prioritize survival and reproduction so our body also will try to put the pathogens out and inside our stomach we have got uh, certain glands that secrete acids certain glands that secrete alkaline liquids so the pathogen has to survive and then of course we have got our own soldiers wbc white blood cells they will start fighting with them so the first priority for the pathogen is to survive and once it gets into the technique of surviving it starts reproducing and that is very dangerous for us because all the pathogens they undergo what we call asexual reproduction and that to multiple fission from one organism body of one pathogen breaks into different parts and each part becomes a new pathogen young pathogen that is the dangerous one for us so the human body's immune system as i said just now having wbc acts as a defense against pathogens the body can easily fight off some pathogens but others are potentially fatal fatal means dangerous so basically there are five main types of pathogens first one is bacteria bacteria are microscopic pathogens that reproduce rapidly after entering the body so their reproductive ability is too much they can release the toxins that damage tissues and cause illness so doctors typically prescribe antibiotics to treat bacterial infections but some bacteria are becoming resistant to these drugs this is a warning bell for us not all bacteria are pathogenic though in the body there are many types of harmless bacteria i can give an example e coli present in our small intestine is our good friend okay that means among the bacteria there are good bacteria as well as bad bacteria the bad bacteria are infectious and uh, what we need to understand and take precautions is that they are becoming strong they are having the ability to destroy our wbc hence 
there are two way strategy one must adapt one is we must make our wbc very strong so that the wbc can have the ability to fight and wipe off the bacteria and second we have to ensure through our medical technology that the bacteria will become weak and second in the list is viruses smaller than bacteria a virus invades a host cell it then replicates producing hundreds and thousands of new viruses that go on to infect more host cells viruses can pass on from person to person in various ways including via respiratory droplets that travel through air we are having now corona already respiratory droplets through contact with the blood of a person with the infection aids virus through contact with the bodily fluids of someone with the infection so viruses are more dangerous than a bacteria and some of the viruses are having high potential of killing the human beings not only animals and plants even the human beings then comes the fungi it's a long strategy one so once a person gets into fungal diseases the fungal diseases will take lot of time to clear off from the body because they have what is called potentially spores and spores will be hidden in the body of the host in the form of uh, what we call uh, the covering with a thick covering called cyst so cyst will be there for long duration in the host body and they can survive the difficult environments also so fungi are thousands of species are there some of them cause diseases in humans common fungal skin conditions include athlete's foot and ringworm these conditions are contagious and can spread through person to person a study in uh, trends in microbiology uh, microbiology biology that uh, that uh, studies about the microbes found that fungal pathogens are evolving a capacity for memory they can use signals in the body see this is again danger for us they can use signals in the body to anticipate imminent threats for their survival against which they can then prepare themselves see they are getting advanced next protista single cell organisms that cause disease in their host they infect other organisms to survive and reproduce protist pathogens affect plants and food crops foods containing protists can cause a dysentery which is an infection of the intestine and cause diarrhea loose motion and again loose motion is again very dangerous it dehydrates the person and it will make the person to lose all the minerals hence person becomes weaker and weaker protist pathogens can also be parasitic and live in other organisms such as mosquitoes and you know protist cause malaria through mosquito bites okay plasmodium there is a protist called plasmodium that causes malarial fever and this malarial fever will be spread from person to person through female anaphylis mosquito bite and that is the reason why you must take care of this female anaphylis mosquitoes otherwise these females bite you and make you get malaria so be careful take care then parasitic worms parasitic worms also known as helminthes remember we were talking about phylum platyhelminthes ask helminthes these are large enough for people to see with naked eye they can live in many areas of the body and some worms of course flat worms these include tapeworm tinea solium which reside in the intestine and cause severe stomach ache thorny headworms this type of worm lives in intestines again the diarrhea and uh, intestine uh, bleeding sometimes round worms these worms can survive in the gastrointestinal tract tract that is digestive tract and lymphatic system all these cause uncomfortableness in our digestive system and sometimes there will be lot of bleeding blood 
will be released out. Severity of the disease. So pathogens can cause variety of different diseases with some being more severe than others. Human bodies are nutrient rich and can provide a pathogen with an ideal environment in which to grow and multiply. The severity of infections that pathogens cause will vary. Some infections may be mild while others can be life threatening. For example, the common cold is a mild viral infection compared with lethal Ebola virus disease. So diseases uh, resulting from bacterial pathogens include uh, very dangerous ones these TB, tuberculosis, meningitis, food poisoning, gonorrhea that is sexually transmitted disease, typhoid fever and chlamydia again the STD. Some scientists believe that viruses are not leaving organisms why they are kept as bridge between living and non-living. They behave both as living as well as non-living. The reason is they do not have cells and they can't reproduce without invading a living cell. To increase their numbers, they have to be inside the host cell. They do not actively respond to changes in their environment. And viral infections include flu, what we call influenza, rotaviruses, measles, mumps and very dangerous lethal one HIV causing AIDS, human immunovirus and then coronaviruses we have been suffering whole world for the last two years and uh, SARS, COVID-2 which causes COVID-19 and about 300 species of fungi are pathogenic to human beings as with bacteria and viruses they can have significant effect on human health and fungi cause many different types of illness including asthma, skin and nail infection, lung infections such as pneumonia that is accumulation of water in the lungs and the lungs get infected, bloodstream infections and meningitis. On the other hand protozoans are responsible for most protista diseases Protozoa are single-celled microorganisms that feed on other microbes, organic tissues and debris. Protist disease include dysentery, malaria, then sleeping sickness. Parasitic worms cause many diseases which include lymphatic filariasis, okay, that uh, what we call uh, elephantasis, onchocerasis and cystoso. Meiosis. How do pathogens spread? Pathogens can spread in a variety of different ways. For example, of course, they spread with uh, physical touch, contact, person to person, through food, through air, and through blood, through semen. So we call this as STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. And these are because of sexually transmitted infections. Coughing, sneezing can cause pathogens to spread through tiny droplets in the air like COVID-19. These droplets can contain microbes which other people breathe. Microorganisms can also travel straight into the gut when a person consumes contaminated food or drinks contaminated water. And most important, bites from infected insects can also spread diseases like I said female anaphylaxis mosquito can spread malaria and ticks with bacterial infection can cause Lyme disease if they bite someone so normally the cattle will suffer with this and uh, mosquitoes with viral infection can cause Zika virus disease and this Zika virus disease threatened the whole world recently so in the next session we'll talk in specific about how to take preventions